guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome to the new Alaskan Tundra DLC pack for Taito Ecology. And right off the bat, it is already snowing in here. I mean, I know it's been a long time since I last played Taito Ecology, but I'm pretty sure we never had any sort of weather, right? This is totally new for this DLC, and we have the northern lights up there too. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. This is crazy. I'm pretty sure, like, we never had rain, we never had snow, certainly never snow, and it's kind of fitting too, because it's actually snowing very, very hard outside where I live right now, so it's a very fitting game to kind of cozy into right in line with the season. Now, there are supposedly 23 new species that we have to take a look at in this uh, biome. We have a whole bunch of brand new animals, arctic hares. We have um, a little arctic bumblebees too. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. And a lynx. Oh, we have a lynx just like our lynx mother in Meadow and then the Shelter series, arctic wolves, caribou, even a wolverine and a grizzly bear. Oh my gosh, and a moose and a polar bear too. That is going to be so much fun for us to uh, take a look at. Though it does seem like there's not much uh, prey in here, is there? We have a lemming, we have um, our arctic hares, we have the arctic ground squirrel too. That's the only thing unlocked right now actually, so we'll probably have to start with the arctic ground squirrel, and we'll have to keep a very close eye on them because the one thing that I do remember about this game is that the prey items can get out of hand very, very fast. And then we have a ton of new plants to look at too. All of these beautiful, colorful plants and a big white spruce. Oh my gosh, we can make a little forest in here somewhere too, just like in our previous biomes. Oh, that is going to be so much fun. Of course, first we do need to start with um, just our regular grass, our diamond leaf willow it looks like. This is our first little plant that we can bring into the biome, so we'll go ahead and place as much as we can right now. There we go, we've used up all of our energy. So four little uh, patches of this diamond leaf willow was enough to use up all of our energy right now. And I believe if we buy more of the uh, different zones, then we'll be able to uh, gather up a little bit more energy at once. And it looks like we actually have like this tiny little frozen puddle down here. This is frozen, right? It all looks like ice. I mean, it makes sense. It looks very, very chilly here. It seems like um, a lot of these different zones actually have those tiny, tiny little puddles. Let's see, we have one right there. We have one over here. Um, yeah, the only one missing it is in um, zone two. So that would probably be the next one that we're unlocking too. And for 50 Taito coins, I mean, we might as well because then we'll have access to a little bit more energy at once. Um, it is quite a large area for us to work with, so we'll probably stick to zone 1 for now, and then we'll slowly spread out like we normally do. But right now, we do need to just make sure that we have enough of this grass. Why don't we buy some more? We'll buy the cotton grass. We'll go ahead and buy that. We'll buy the um, field horsetail too. That would probably look nice up here. So we'll place as much as we can in this area and then we'll go ahead and bring um, all of those squirrels into the place too. As long as they have enough to eat, then they should be fine. And of course, we can't forget about our decomposers either. It looks like, oh my gosh, we have new decomposers too. And mushrooms, of course, mushrooms. We can't have a biome without our mushrooms. So we can place the mushrooms in here right away just so that we're prepared to uh, take on some new animals once we're ready to uh, place them in here too. So let's just place a couple of these mushrooms nearby. And look at that, the caribou moss is actually poisonous. Okay, can the caribou eat the caribou moss? Let's see if the uh, caribou can actually do that. Let's see, there, the caribou. The consumer can eat poisonous and venomous life forms, so it can actually eat the caribou moss. Oh, that's interesting. So when we finally get all the way to the caribou, then we will definitely have to remember to uh, supply it with a bunch of caribou moss because they probably would like to uh, munch on that every now and then. I would assume so anyway. If it's named after the caribou, then the caribou is probably going to like it. But let's place a little bit more of this cotton grass around here. And um, we had a little patch right over here. There we go. We want to place it in the same area so that we know that our little um, ground squirrels are going to be able to reach it. And this one too, look at that. That's a little bit bigger than the others. Oh, that looks nice. It kind of spruces up the place at least. I mean, it's meant to be uh, pretty sparse in the tundra, isn't it? But we do want to make sure that our um, arctic ground squirrels are going to be fed at least. Let's go ahead and place them right in the middle of this, right here. There we go. And let's take a look at these guys. Oh, it has been so long since we played Taito Ecology. I forgot how adorable these little models are. Oh my gosh, he almost reminds me of uh, the groundhog, I believe it was, right? Or the prairie dog, I think? The prairie dog from the grasslands. Oh gosh, the grasslands. Like, I am very glad that we don't have um, some mice in here to deal with. Though we do have the Arctic hare. And I remember the bunnies were a little bit of an issue too. 
so we just have to keep our eyes on those guys, I guess. Though there are a lot of predators in here. The lynxes, the arctic wolves, the wolverines, even the grizzly bears. So I can't imagine that we'll have uh, too much trouble keeping their populations under control as long as we bring them in soon enough. The arctic fox might be a good one to start with just because it's a little bit smaller than all of those big, big carnivores and um, it would probably have a better time just munching on all of these little arctic ground squirrels anyway. For now though, why don't we unlock the um, arctic bumblebee? Because we probably do want some sort of pollinator in here so that they can take care of um, all of this grass, all of these different plants, and hopefully help them spread. We'll place them right nearby these little um, ground squirrels. I wonder if they're actually going to eat our bumblebees. I wonder if we actually click on um, one of our ground squirrels, we should be able to uh, find out. And this thing is floating. This thing is definitely floating. Okay, they're in like a little uh, tunnel underground too. That's interesting. Typically our little uh, bumblebees end up in a tree. So these guys like to live on the ground. I did not know that. Um, let's see, can we find one of our little squirrels? I think this is a squirrel down here. They blend in so well with the mushrooms because they're almost the same size, but we can click on their bio decks and see that they are foragers at heart. Arctic ground squirrels eat plants, invertebrates, eggs, birds, and carrion. When pressed, they will even eat small rodents like lemmings. The majority of their diet consists of plant matter. Okay, so I think our bees are going to be safe. I think they'll be safe from uh, these guys. And let's see, how about their habitat too? Like we don't often click on these other um, different sections in the bio decks. So Arctic ground squirrels typically inhabit northern Arctic and tundra regions at higher elevations, but they can also be found in cold forests at lower elevations. That's actually perfect. Didn't we place them right on top of this hill? I mean, basically, they're pretty much at the top of the hill, the top of this uh, little incline here, so they will probably enjoy this place, I would assume so, but it sounds like we could also place them in a uh, lower forest region. Maybe over here, maybe when we get over to uh, the other side of the biome, we'll go ahead and uh, place all of those spruce trees in and we'll see if we can make a tiny little forest for all of our animals. But it looks like some of our energy has come back and why don't we actually speed up the time too? We'll go ahead and speed up the time so that we can get energy back much, much faster. Like I said, it has been a long time since I played Tide of Ecology and I almost forgot that we had that fast forward button there. Um, we'll go ahead and place some of this um, grass in here again too. Some of this cotton grass because I think they'll probably enjoy that. They probably do need a little bit more to uh, sustain themselves anyway. It looks like their average hunger is actually going down. So let's make sure that they have plenty to eat. It sounds like um, most of their food is going to be plant life. So we just need to find the right thing for them. And all of these plants, they uh, can eat too. None of them are poisonous. None of them are too tough. Let's go ahead and place some of the flowers in then. We'll place these purple flowers. Oh my gosh, that's going to be really pretty. Let's zoom in there so that we can actually see them though. Oh, look at these. They're so tiny. Itty bitty little flowers. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. We'll place them right in the middle of uh, their little, little hill over here too so that they can have a nice purple flower home. There we go. That is going to look so nice once all of this spreads around though. Once it spreads a little bit more um, naturally. Now let's place another group of the Arctic ground squirrel in here just so that when we uh, do unlock the arctic fox, they will hopefully not get completely wiped out. We always have a little bit of trouble balancing the uh, prey and the predators. We do want to make sure that the prey is uh, properly, um, I guess, accustomed to this biome before we drop the predators straight in. And we've already earned a couple Taito coins too, so that's good to see. There we go. They are already on the move too. I guess this guy heard my plan. He is definitely not sticking around for the arctic foxes. Maybe we should try that though. We'll go ahead and give that a try. Um, I know in the grasslands, the foxes were actually omnivores, but it looks like these guys are just straight up carnivores. We'll go ahead and check out their biodex too though. Um, let's see, where should we place them? How big is their territory? I suppose that, that is um, the biggest question. Ah, yes, it is quite big. Let's go ahead and place them right by the water side. We'll place them right by this little frozen lake so that they can access um, both of these different squirrel places and that they can also uh, come over here and maybe walk across the ice if they wanted to. Look at these guys too. Oh my gosh, they are adorable. All of that big white fluffy fur. Oh my goodness, and they blend in so well. This is going to be a little bit tricky for me yet again. I remember I had a lot of trouble finding um, the snow leopards in the Himalayas biome because they blended in so well with the snow. So it might be a little bit tricky for us to find them later. And in fact, let's go right into their bio decks now because I probably won't be able to find them later. So the Arctic foxes scamper and play in Arctic and Alpine tundra displaying a preference for coastal areas. And it looks like Arctic foxes, of course, are happy to dine on almost any animal. While they will eat living or dead prey, Arctic 
Arctic foxes prefer small mammals such as lemmings. They also eat insects, berries, carrion, and even animal and human detritus. Oh geez. Well, I mean, at least they'll be helping us decompose a little bit then. <laughs> at least they'll be uh, picking up after all of the other animals. That's why we placed our mushrooms in here. But if they can help us out a little bit, I would not be um, upset about that at all. In fact, um, do we have any ants to help clean us up? because typically we would place the ants down. It does not look like it. Okay, so hopefully the mushrooms are going to um, be able to take care of all of the carcasses. I'm not sure if maybe the game had another update and that doesn't matter as much anymore, but previously we definitely needed those uh, scavengers who would come around and uh, pick up all of the extra meat laying on the ground. These are quite expensive to unlock though. Look at that, 75, 60 Taito coins. We're actually running quite low because um, we don't have as many animals in the biome at the moment. So we're not getting as many Taito coins at once. And it looks like this guy has already escaped. Oh, look at that. I remember that icon. That was something new that we didn't uh, play around with too much, but that means that they have escaped getting eaten by um, these Arctic foxes. Oh, but they're so hungry. Oh no, you guys, you definitely have to uh, catch your next meal, okay? Did he manage to get this one? Um, no, he didn't. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. How about you? Did you catch this one? It doesn't look like it. Yeah, he's just walking away. Oh, that is not good. You guys, you have to catch your next meal, okay? Um, maybe we should actually add a little bit more prey in here. It did say they like lemmings. It did say that they like to uh, eat lemmings. Did you? Oh my goodness, I thought he passed away, but he's just sleeping. Now is not the time to sleep on the job, little fox. You have to get some food before you end up uh, starving to death. There are so many of these little guys right around him too. I mean, I feel like he could just reach over and snag them, any one of them. They're all sleeping together. I mean, honestly, this is the perfect time for you. It's even nighttime. <laughs> you would think that the Arctic fox would want to hunt at night. Oh geez, lazy foxes. The predators are always so very lazy in this game. Um, I guess instead though, we could place those lemmings in here. We could. Um, I am just a little bit concerned that they won't have enough food to eat. So let's just make sure that these guys are doing all right on food. Um, we're on 83, so they're still hovering around the same location that they were before. So maybe they'll be okay. We'll just place a couple more of these um, different plants in here since we have plenty of energy right now. We have plenty of energy to play around with. We'll go ahead and place some more of this uh, diamond leaf willow in here. There we go, some diamond leaf willow. Um, that should be good. And more of this field horsetail too. Let's place it way back here, in fact way back here so that they have a uh, plenty oh no our arctic foxes plenty of little uh, grass to munch on over there um let's quickly place the lemmings in though very very quickly that was 50 taito coins for the lemmings too all right that's two groups of lemmings down so hopefully this guy is running straight over because i saw that his health is getting low now too oh you have to catch a meal little fox you have to is this going to be the one no not even that one Oh my gosh, they're having such a hard time catching their food. This is not good. You are almost out of time, little fox. Um, it looks like maybe the other one actually ate because they just gained a little bit of health. Um, let's see, can I find the other fox? Um, of course, they'd like to blend in. Let's see, well, this one is sleeping. You are sleeping right next to your food. Really? Really? You're just going to sleep directly next to your food? Oh man, I can't even click on this guy either. There we go. Oh, look at that. He did manage to snag him. Oh, excellent. So this guy just kind of like jumped up from his nap and then snagged this uh, little ground squirrel for breakfast. Now the other one has to do the same. The other Arctic fox needs a little bit of luck too. Let's see, where is the other one? Way over here? Oh, did you catch it too? Oh my gosh, you managed to catch it. Oh, thank goodness. I really thought we were going to lose the Arctic foxes already. So it seems like they um, are a little bit better at catching the lemmings. So let's make sure that our lemming population is a uh, nice and safe and sound. We'll give them a little bit more food to munch on over here. Some of this uh, horsetail again. There we go, a little bit more of this on this side so that um, this group in particular can reach it. And it looks like, oh my gosh, already low population. Okay, now the Arctic foxes are just getting a little bit greedy, aren't they? Let's see, we only have two left. Two of them are left. How many did it start with? There's four in here. Okay, so maybe if it only started with four, then they just ate two of them. Um, it starts with six. Oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> 
I know I need you to catch some food to survive, but don't get greedy. That's a little bit much. You're going to end up wiping out this entire population. How much longer until these guys reproduce? I guess that's the question. Um, 13 weeks. Okay, so they're relatively um fast at reproducing, actually. So it might not be um too much of a problem if these guys are munching away at them. And I believe, thanks to um the last update that we played with, they can actually crossbreed between the territories now. So hopefully, even if um, this group only gets down to one little lemming left, then they'll still be able to breed with um, the other group of lemmings too, which is why we kind of place them a little bit close together. Now that could spell disaster for us if they end up being like the next deer mouse of um, the grasslands biome. We definitely don't want that to happen. So we'll just keep a very close eye on them. We'll make sure when um, those 12 weeks pass that we go right over to their territories and uh, see how things are going, I guess. And for that matter, the ground squirrels, I mean, I see them all kind of just like rustling around in the snow right now, along with that fox who is hopefully going to be catching, um, yep, another meal. There we go. That looked like it was probably one of the ground squirrels. Ah, yes, that is a ground squirrel. Oh my goodness. I mean, I guess they learned. They learned from their mistakes. You have to give them that. So let's go ahead and unlock some of these uh, other plants too. We'll do the bear berry. That's something different. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, it's much bigger actually. All right, look at that, much, much bigger. And it looks like it has um, little fruits on it too, little berries most likely. So hopefully that'll be able to feed somebody. We'll have to come back once um, they're properly pollinated so that we can hopefully see what sort of fruits are on them. Let's place a couple more around here too. We'll place them right around um, our little Arctic bumblebees, I believe they were, yeah, the Arctic bumblebees. We'll place them right in the area so that they can hopefully uh, pollinate these guys. There we go, a nice little clump of bear berries. And it's right next to our Arctic ground squirrels too, so they should be able to reach these um, with relative ease, as long as our little Arctic foxes don't get to them first. They're not really big enough to hide in though. They're not really big enough for um, any of our Arctic foxes to kind of prowl around or anything. And in fact, most of these plants seem like they're very, very low to the ground. We have these two um, little flower looking things, I believe. Let's go ahead and unlock these two. That's going to use up most of our Taito coins, so we might as well at this point just unlock the this final tree as well. We'll go ahead and unlock that too and now we have access to every single one of the plants so we can play around with them the landscape at least. But let's see what these look like. We'll go way out here where um, we only have this little fox roaming at the moment. This is not a good idea. Oh and there we go. There's all of our plants too so we get a little reward from unlocking all of those. And that actually covers the cost of uh, the pine tree too. So excellent. It's almost like we uh, managed to get it for free. And here's those little flowers. Oh, those are cool too. They leave their little indents in the snow too, so we can really uh, spruce up the landscape with those at least. And I believe the other ones were very, very similar, just a different color. Let's go ahead and place them right next to them so that we can see them side by side. Yep, just a different color. Oh, that would be so cool to make a big flower field like that. And I think um, our animals would probably enjoy that too. So let's go ahead and place a couple more of these. And again, it is going to be so nice when um, the game just kind of spreads it by itself lets all of the plants just spread around naturally in um, their random formations. So we're not placing them down um, methodically one by one. Are they both going for the same one? Oh my gosh, they are. Did they manage to catch it? I mean, two against one, really? Really, they managed to slip between your little paws? Oh my goodness. And this one is so hungry too. Oh, we're getting into that sort of situation again. Maybe it's because our uh, lemming population is so low right now. I wonder. It really seems like they uh, favor the lemmings over the uh, Arctic ground squirrels. It seems that way anyway. We have five Arctic ground squirrels left in uh, this territory. We have eight of them left in this one. Yeah, they definitely prefer the lemmings. I mean, only one left here, only uh, two left in this one, and we still have um, a couple weeks left before they even reproduce. So we definitely need to add a couple more groups of uh, lemmings in, and we need to do it very, very quickly. Oh my gosh, 4% left. I don't think we're going to be able to save this guy, are we? I don't think so. Let's place one right here. I'm um, right in front of him as he's just like running into the distance. Distance. Hopefully he can grab this one. Hopefully. Ah, he did! Right at the end! Right at the end, like down to the wire. Okay, so that fox gets to live another day and we also place another group of uh, little lemmings over here. 
so we can uh, be sure that they'll at least um, survive through this breeding cycle. Because I believe um, both of these groups can reach this one. Yeah, they definitely can. So even if um, one more of these creatures gets eaten, we'll still be able to see if these groups crossbreed. But until then, why don't we uh, try placing down that big tree that we unlocked too? I mean, we might as well. We'll place down all of these different plants and oh my goodness, look at this one. That is huge compared to all of our other plants. We'll place that right back there. Let's go ahead and place a couple more of these down though because those are gorgeous. Um, oh no, oh no, one of our arctic foxes did pass away. So we will actually have to place another group of arctic foxes in the area. Um, what happened though? Where on earth did those uh, arctic foxes run off to? We have this one way back here. Um, that one's still alive and it does look like it managed to uh, eat again. But where did the other one pass away? Was it just too far away from any food? That may be the case. We do need to kind of spread these guys out a little bit so that wherever the uh, predator happens to be, it can still find a little bit of food, even if it can't manage to catch it, even if it's having a little bit of trouble catching all of these uh, different prey items. Let's actually place um, some bumblebees over here though. Since we have so many trees over here, it would make sense if we had another group of bumblebees to keep it pollinated. There we go, we'll place it uh, right in the middle of these two trees. That should be pretty good. And we probably want to uh, place some more mushrooms here too. Since we have so many more of these different animals, we definitely have more waste being uh, produced too. We're down to one week left on this particular group of lemmings before they reproduce. One week, and I believe that's just um, one daylight cycle, right? I believe that's how they change that. So once the sun comes up, we might be seeing tiny little baby lemmings showing up here. And I do want to see how many of them are actually born at a time, because that could make or break us right now. Um, I mean, we have access to so many different predators that I know we could drop a couple in if we had to. Um, if we had to really scramble around to get rid of these guys if they turned out to be just like the deer mice. But let's see, there we go. They're already popping in. Oh my goodness, <laughs> they look like tiny snow mice because they're in those lines oh that is adorable tiny tiny little snow mice um just three juveniles just three of them really i mean did they show up anywhere else um no juveniles there and none there either just three little juveniles for our lemmings oh my gosh well i am very glad that we added in a couple more territories of lemmings then because they would not have lasted with um two arctic foxes hunting them all down though we do need to add another group of arctic foxes in i think we do definitely need to do that and uh, these guys are doing just fine um actually i might be a little bit more worried about the uh, arctic squirrels at this point if the foxes can't eat them we might have to find a different predator who's a little bit more suited to eating those uh, squirrels so that they don't get out of hand. But let's go ahead and place another group of our arctic foxes in before we end out the episode, before we go ahead and basically just let the wilds loose, see where everything ends up. It looks like we already have a very, very lazy new fox, and this one is actually going over here to investigate the water, it seems. That's interesting. I mean, we don't have much over here, so most of our animals have kind of steered clear, but I wonder if we started placing more plants and whatnot around this area, maybe they would, uh, come by and check it out a little bit more. But other than that, just based on all of the hunger levels of our herbivores, I think we're doing just fine. It seems like the Arctic ground squirrel found uh, plenty to eat in all of this grass that we placed in the area, and um, this one did too. They're all still hovering around about 80% full, so that's good to see. Um, even our lemmings are actually eating too. They're all kind of hovering around 80%, so maybe that's kind of like the average. That's what we should shoot for, um, especially on our arctic foxes. And look at that, that one arctic fox managed to find a nice big meal because they're hovering right around 90. And uh, this one, you guys, you guys are going to have a little bit of trouble too, aren't you? Our arctic foxes, like the predators really seem to have it rough after that last update. They do have quite a bit more trouble just catching their food, but I hope they'll survive. I mean, we've given them plenty Plenty of opportunities to catch food at least. It's just all down to you now, little guy. It's all up to you to actually catch these tiny little lemmings. Did you get this one? No, you still didn't get it, did you? <laughs> it's still running away. But we have a dead lemming over here. Um, This one still has a little bit of meat left on it, so you could eat that if you had to. Uh, maybe he is a little bit too proud to kind of scrounge around for food. I have a feeling that might be the case because this one is definitely, definitely on the move right now. Oh my gosh, they're all escaping everywhere. Did you catch this one? Something to end the episode on a high note? No, not at all. <laughs> Ending it on a very lazy note as our little fox curls back to sleep. So thank you all so much for watching today and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!